In our schools, we have been celebrating Black History Month throughout February, an opportunity for us to celebrate the achievements and contributions of Black Canadians throughout history and in contemporary society today. We have also taken the time to learn and unlearn with our students, unpacking the legacy of racism in our society and recognizing that racist attitudes continue to prevail in our institutions and in our hearts as well. Such learning can be hard, especially when we must question our own assumptions and biases. But good teachers have a responsibility to their students to present truth as we know it, or as we come, have come to discover it. It's a responsibility that is core to the vocation of a teacher, or to anyone charged with the responsibility of guiding others. We include here parents, grandparents, and caregivers, any of us who seek to be good shepherds. How do we know that we have come to the truth? Certainly, we're guided by the contributions of scholars and the findings of research. We know that history is a matter of constant reinterpretation. So we feel we are on solid ground in accepting and teaching the results of the latest and most rigorous scholarship. In the second reading today, Paul, in fact, gives us great encouragement to stand steadfast and immovable in our truth and in our work, knowing that our labor, always excelling, is not in vain. But Jesus has a cautionary note for us in the Gospel reading today. Be thoughtful in relating the truth, he instructs, lest you be accused of being blind in leading the blind. Be considerate in teaching the truth, he says, not boasting in your own superior understanding, nor casting shade on others for their faulty views. This is what hypocrites do, he tells us, spotting the speck in our neighbor's eye when we do not see the log in our own. Certainly, Jesus is not dissuading us from telling the truth, but he is schooling us in how we can tell truth more thoughtfully and considerately. We can fairly be accused of being blind when we do not lead thoughtfully or wisely. Do we seek to reach others where they are, challenging when appropriate, yet also being open to creating spaces for genuine conversation and dialogue? How do we position ourselves as we seek to guide others? Considerately? As co-learners on the journey? Or as persons with a monopoly of fact and right reason on our side? Jesus reminds us that we are all students journeying together. We should admit to one another that we are all blind in, in some aspects and that humility must be our stance. St. Paul captures this sentiment well. Now we see but a dim reflection as in a mirror. Now we know in part. Then we shall know fully, even as we are fully known. With Jesus' cautions in mind, he nevertheless calls us to be people who see clearly and who share the truth. How again do we know we have come to the truth? Jesus tells us in the Gospel that seeing clearly arises from the abundance of the heart. From the good treasure of the heart, the good person will produce good. In Le Petit Prince, a children's classic written by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry, the little prince learns lessons on his journey. He has traveled far from his planet out of exasperation with his friend, the Rose, who has proved tiresome and silly. But the little prince discovers that his time away from the Rose has made the Rose more special to him because of the care and the attention that he's devoted to this relationship. 
As a wise mentor, the fox tells the prince, we see clearly only with the heart. What is essential is invisible to our eyes. The prince discovers that the most important things in life are those that we cannot see. Love, friendship, hope, compassion, and forbearance. We hope that the little prince returns to his planet and his friend, the rose, wiser in the ways of friendship. We hope that these two friends find newfound treasure in the ups and downs that come with relationship. When we learn to see with our hearts, we see clearly and can come to discover the truth and its solid foundations. Our truth becomes the truth because it is embedded in relationship with God, our creator. God has made us to be in relationship in Jesus and with one another. Within these relationships, we learn to see clearly and can, can speak truth as we receive it. So when we celebrate Black History Month, we speak clearly with our hearts, using the lessons that Jesus is teaching us, that we are one in the body of Christ, united in our humanity and in our equality. When we see the evil of war arising from the aggression of oligarchs, we speak our truth in God's power. There is no place for war in our world. When we approach Ash Wednesday and the season of Lent, we seek to see clearly in submission to Christ, knowing that we are fragile vessels tested in the potter's kiln, learning from our errors and seeking forgiveness from one another. And when we approach the Eucharist, we ask that Christ continue to share the gift of clear sight with us in uniting our body with his. May we be thankful for the gift of clear sight and may we continue to seek God and see one another with our hearts.